Great start to the morning. We packed all the tools back as we take them with us every night. That's not gonna last forever. That's for certainly sure. So a solution for that needs to be brought here. But everybody's already working, so that's great because it's eight o'clock. That means they started before eight. That is really good. Uh, today, I get to weld, 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 more weld. We're almost out of material. So that, there's a lesson to anybody who's working in Costa Rica for material. When you um, make a decision, so Fairmax was gonna do the metal, but they said to us that it would be 22 days before they could get the metal, uh, which is like mind blowing because Fairmax is the largest metal distributor in Central America. They have 20 something locations in Costa Rica, like 30 in Nicaragua, Hondo all over the place, right? So it's like, I, I could barely understand that. So we found a ferreteria, a great ferreteria. They're called Boston. We buy lots of tools from them. Thank you very much for doing all the work that you do, Boston. Uh, in San Isidro, which is about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes from here. And we bought all the metal from them and I had a third party buy it all for me and get it delivered. And it was gonna be here Saturday, Monday and Tuesday. So I showed up Saturday and loaded 120 pieces or something like that. And then the rest was coming Monday. This is now the second Monday since that was said. And what I'd learned was they were giving free um, uh, transportation, which is like, wow, that's really nice. See you. I guess it's because I just spent like $10,000 on metal from you. So that's why you're giving me free transportation. Thank you. But that's not the case. The free transportation was because they will transport it whenever they want. So that new information to me is like, wow, I definitely would have paid for transportation um, rather than get free. Because like I say in a lot of videos, free is never free. Cheaper is never cheaper if it's the only thing. So like if something's cheaper and it's faster, then it probably works. Or if it's cheaper and it's quality, it'll probably work. But if it's just cheaper, there's probably something there. So free transportation, there's something there. Cause we're down to three sticks and I need like another 120 sticks to keep going. So right now I'm just making the floor when I should be making walls and making roofs. Something seems to be licking me. Hello, little dog. How are you? Yes, he's licked me. Hmm. Anyways, I'm gonna weld the floor because until we get some more material, that's all I got to do. Needs to be done, so I'll do it. meet Larry from Kavu Development. Uh, he's the developer for the river project. So that means he's gonna put in all the infrastructure that includes roads, landscaping, um, electricity, water, 
And he's also gonna help with the, um, the geothermal air conditioning unit, the water supply for that from the river. It's just gonna be pretty rad. I can't believe we get to do that. That's like icing on the cake for me. Uh, super, it's an innovation, but is it? Because it's caveman technology. Geothermal cooling and heating has been around forever. The challenge with it is some systems are so large that it takes humongous pumps to keep the water circulating. And when you use a lot of electricity to move pumps, you kind of, you know, defeat the purpose of using geothermal. And geothermal basically is just going underground where the where the core temperature stays the same. And as long as it's a little bit cooler or a little bit warmer than the atmospheric pressure above the ground, you can use a radiator and diffuse that and, and cool quite a lot. So I've been watching some YouTube videos. You know, that's how I learned everything that I know is from YouTube videos. And I never watched the whole thing. I think I should watch the whole thing. Um, I only watch parts of it until I get bored and then I go try it and uh, quite often it works out pretty good. So hopefully that works out pretty good on this geothermal air conditioning unit. Back to Larry. We're going there and we're going to talk about doing some of his office. It's right next to Delicia's coffee shop, which is a really, really cool spot in Dominical right when you pull in. And we're going to talk about pulling out the glass sliding doors and everything in the front and putting in rad pad panels. Huh? Pretty rad. So it won't be a rad pad, but it'll be a uh, rad pad office slash Kavu um, land development here in Costa Rica. So that's where we're going. Quick coffee break. Welding all day. Fantastic day today. Learned some stuff. I don't know what it was. It'll come back into play. Gotta go. Ah, I learned how to do a redneck washing machine. So I tried to find a washing machine. So one of the challenges of building is like keeping your clothes clean. Cause if you work all day and stuff, we talked about food. Food is a challenge. I learned this from having muchachos on full time. You gotta feed them, transport them, house them, take care of them when they're sick. And that includes taking care of their moms when they're sick. Um, so yeah, so cleaning ropas is a thing. So there's a way to do it with two five gallon buckets and a plunger and a bunch of holes. It's pretty amazing. The guys even figured out how to spin dry your clothes with just a rope on a tree branch. It's called a redneck. Is that appropriate? I don't know if that's appropriate, but that's what it's called. A redneck washing machine. And uh, yeah, you put your clothes in it, use a plunger and it's like they come out super clean. And uh, that's going to help me stay clean for you guys. Then I'm also going to get a haircut. It's time. So I'm going to get a haircut. I'm going to get two five gallon buckets so I can make my redneck clothes wash. 
dishwasher because I'm out of clean clothes. And uh, I'm also gonna get the crock pot so that I can get like eight frozen chickens and eight frozen fish and then put one in my crock pot. So now when I arrive home, because I'm so hungry right now, I don't have any food at home. So I'm gonna probably go out to eat. And in Costa Rica, just so you know, it is not cheap, not expensive. We've already gone over this in the past, but the point is it's 20 bucks. And every time you eat out, it adds up. And then you go, you have buyer's remorse, right? So uh, I'm gonna try and eat out less by getting the crock pot tomorrow. That's first thing, because I can't come to work because I need more welding alambre. How many times have I said that on videos? Um, like discos, I never buy a hundred. I only buy 10 at a time. I should just buy a hundred. Um, so I'm gonna buy every uh, piece of welding alambre as possible. Was that the blue morpho? I think it was, that's awesome. Yeah, you haven't lived in Costa Rica until you've chilled long enough to see the blue morpho. I think it's morpho. It's this big butterfly and it's like blue and silky and it's just beautiful uh, until you've seen one of those. So that's everything. We got the septic tanks in, that was awesome. Uh, we're on the final foundation. We got the wall posts up, I'd say like 60%, 70% on the second building. Uh, our first milestone is four foundations and two septic tanks. Um, we're gonna do that. So we're gonna have that done this week, I'm pretty sure. Um, and that's pretty amazing to hit the milestones. You know, we spent so much time coming up with a, a contractor contract or agreement uh, for construction. And the first milestone is with a rad pad, you put 20% down and then the rest of it goes into an escrow account and then 20% out of the escrow account to rad pad when the foundations are finished and the septic tanks are in. And then we go on to our second milestone, which is going to be, what is it? Walls up and roof on. And then when we nail that one, another 20% goes to rad pad. And then we do, I think wall panels and floor and then wall panels, floor and windows. That's an expensive one. That one wasn't so well thought out with the 2020, 2020. Um, but anyways, we hold on to a little bit of cash reserve from this, using it for the window cost and the plastic cost on the next milestone. And then the home run, that's glass and doors, electricity and plumbing. Boom, 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 because they happen pretty quick. And that's the finish of the rad pad. And now we're super clear. Rad pad is not a, um, what's that called? Ground? Landscaping company. We do not do the landscaping. We just build the structure. Um, so as soon as we're done with that, we hand over the keys and then landscapers will come in. And I believe on this project it is Kavu. They're excellent land developers here. So they're going to be handling all the infrastructure and the landscaping. And that's it for today. I'm going to go get some food and then tomorrow I'm going to get food supplies and then build more houses. Thanks for watching RadPad. Please subscribe. Please, please do it. And then also tell somebody, share it, share it with somebody. Yes. Somebody's TikToking behind me. Adios, nos vemos.